Hey everybody, so today we are going to be talking about a highly requested topic and that is ontology or knowledge graph model instance data. So what is instance data? This is a very common thing that people ask and I hear a lot of answers that are, well, it depends. So if you are interested in a more specific answer to this question, Make sure you watch the rest of this video because we are going to go through the top three characteristics that I consider when thinking about instance data, as well as going through some examples so you can see how you can determine if you need instance data and if you have instance data. All right, so that leads us to the very first thing to think about, which is you don't necessarily need instance data. It is not required. The next thing you wanna think about is Instance data is really going to be dependent on two major things, and that is the model you are creating, whether it's property graph or triple store, doesn't matter. Triple store actually, if it doesn't have a higher level model, uh, does often use what I would consider instance data to spin up analytics, but it really depends on, and this is the most important part of this whole video, instance data is 100% dependent on the answers you are trying to retrieve from your knowledge graph. So if you are trying to find very specific data, for instance, a VIN number for a vehicle, that is a very specific instance of what could be considered an F-150 in the general class or node structure. The other thing to keep in mind before we get into the characteristics is knowledge graphs are pretty flexible. So if you don't get it right this time, get it right the next time. It's totally fine because for instance, if you have a taxonomy and you, uh, or, or a list of subjects, an aboutness list, if you have synonyms for those subjects, you have two options, right? You can have those as attributes, right? So you can have these as uh, use for or alt labels if you're using SCOS. Those are attributes that you can later pull out and make instance data if you ever needed to. So getting into the characteristics that I use to think about instance data, these do not stand alone, right? You probably want to think about all of these in conjunction while you're making these decisions. So the very first one is I like to think of instance data as the lowest common denominator of data in order to answer the question that I am posing to the graph. And that doesn't mean it's going to be instance data, right? Because sometimes your subclasses, if you're talking about in, in our example today, we're talking about um, like a Ford manufacturing company. Maybe you, maybe you just need to know what kind of Ford models, right, are, are going out. You don't need to know instance data in that case, right? So, so this by itself is not the only indicator that you have instance data, but it is a very high contribution to whether you have instance data or not. The next thing to think about is, is having this list. So if we're looking at a list and trying to determine if it's instance data or not, is this list of things going to add unnecessary complications to my graph? Or are these things going to really assist me in deriving better answers from the graph? And those are the things that you have to, again, determine based on the use case you are looking at. And then the last thing is, chances are if you have a list of things and those things are at a very um, specific level, meaning I can go and physically see something or it is something that would have maybe only one example of it in the world. So the uh, maybe Coca-Cola that I drank today, that is very unique to me. I drank that one Coca-Cola and it is very unique because it's different from the Coca-Cola you might be drinking right now. You see what I mean? It's very unique to me as an individual. All of those instance maybe level things can roll up into a class. So if your class or your node can contain all of these and getting this node back in your query retrieval would answer your question, then you don't necessarily need to have all that instance data. It can be contained within that node. But if you do actually want to have very specific, maybe numbers on my Coca-Cola example, I need to find that exact Coca-Cola bottle because maybe something was tampered with and now we know that we need to recall it. 
that is very specific. So having that retrieved as a node is not going to help me very much. All right, so getting into examples, I'm going to pop up on the screen a little mini uh, model. It's going to be very simplistic and I'm not going to put all of the nodes and edges here. I'm just going to put the level because in these examples, we're going to walk through which level I want to retrieve in my query and if I need more specific or instance data in order to get a better answer. All right, so in our use case, again, we are at a Ford manufacturer or dealership. So all of these are going to be focused on, well, the Ford Focus <laughs> and the Ford F-150 is our examples here. All right, so the very first question we're going to pose to our graph is, what was the most popular vehicle type from last year? I might want to know this so that I don't over manufacture or under manufacture a certain type of vehicle that everyone seems to be very interested in now. I don't know, an electric vehicle for instance. <laughs> so in our case here, we don't need to go down to the individual level. We don't need to understand the specific vehicle that I drove off the lot with. We also don't even need to understand the different model types of these vehicles. We just need to know the vehicle type. So in that case, our instance data would be level two. But this instance data is pretty well understood as, as a node. You don't need to know very specific individual information. This node might actually have your the, the sales of last year so that you can make your determination from the attributes of this node. So in this case, you may not actually need to use this as instance data. You can just have it as a subclass. So the second question we might want to pose to our graph is what was the most productive manufacturing line on in our plant, in any plant? So here in our example, each manufacturing line is likely only going to be making one model type of whatever Ford is making that year. So in our case here, level three could be our instance because those are specific body types that are coming off these manufacturing lines. If I was retrieving answers on manufacturing lines, I only need to understand the make and model. My make is my Ford manufacturing and my model would be the F-150. That's all I need to know in order to answer this question. So these also could be considered subtypes. You don't necessarily need to have these as instance level. Now in this situation, Ford only makes so many models of vehicle. If you are working on a product manufacturing plant that has a lot more product, then you might need to have some of these things as instance level. That's where we go back to those characteristics to make that decision. In our case, this is likely only a class level and not an instance level because there are only a very finite amount of product model types that Ford is a manufacturer this year. So the next question we're going to talk about is at a very detailed level, at a very individual level. So let's say, for instance, I needed to understand which vehicles in the state of Massachusetts no longer had vehicle registration. Maybe they're out of date and I need to send them a letter in the mail telling them they need to renew their vehicle registration. Well, that's at a very specific level. I need to know the exact vehicle, the exact VIN number for me to be able to make that determination. So in that case, this is likely instance level. Alternatively, if I am the Ford manufacturer and I need to know the exact VIN number of all of the vehicles that I made today, maybe we found some error in one of the systems and we need to make sure that we do a safety check on anything that was created. That is very specific. Those are specific vehicles that are physical that you will have to go and check. These are very good indicators that these things are instance level. Now, all of this is talking about things and not named entities. When we get into named entities, it is a little bit different. You can still use a lot of these same principles. But for instance, if you are looking at a company type, let's say shoe manufacturer, and then you have Nike, Nike could be an instance because there are probably thousands of other types of shoe manufacturers on the planet. Now, if you are doing analytics just on the top shoe manufacturers and how they influence one another or, or which fabric companies they all have in common, that might mean you do want to have instance level data with Nike and Reebok and whatever other ones that you are trying to do an analytics project on. Or in the case of people, 
Some people have either alternative names or they have other aliases. So for instance, we could have the class director and maybe even a subclass as Larry Wachowski. Or, you know, if you just want to have a whole list of directors, those would be instances. But let's say you want to have the alternate, which is Lana Wachowski, then you may want to think about having that as an instance connected to Larry Wachowski, or maybe the opposite because Larry now goes by Lana. So these are some examples where you might want to think about this from a different perspective if you're looking at named entities. All right, so with that, I hope this has helped you understand a little bit more about instance level data and how to make that determination. There is no right or wrong answer. This really depends on what you want to retrieve and how you are setting up your model and what problems you're trying to solve. All right, so with that, I wanna thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.